Greetings, music friends. Greg Koch here, Wildwood Guitars, hanging out with Doug Sewell, amplifier guru, tone counsel, manipulator, creator, and wielder. Wielder. I've actually seen I'm you something. pick them up and throw them at people because you're very powerful. <laughs> How the hell are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm, I'm, the caffeine is starting. Good to see you. Nice to see you as well. Lovely Colorado. It's very, very nice here today, yeah. as a matter of fact. But we're down in a special bunker, a tone bunker, as you can see, bedecked and surrounded by tone counselry. And uh, let's just talk a little bit about, let's give the folks a little insight into how you got involved with amplifiers, kind of how it all started for you. And uh, how you ended up with our friends at the Paul Reed Smith Organization? Well, grew up a Baptist preacher's son. Guitars weren't allowed in the house. Um, more piano and trombone and stuff like that. But guitars kind of weren't something that uh, I was able to achieve the correct motor skills to be proficient in until I was able to get one in college. Uh -huh. So I was kind of already behind a lot of my buddies and loved, loved the whole thing, rock and roll. Uh, so I ended up playing a more of a subservient role to a lot of these guys that could play and um, kind of wanted to be a part of the whole scene. You know, I started looking for ways to kind of to get in with some of these cats mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, and just enjoy the whole music thing. So um, I was always just um, a lover of great tones. You know, I think the first thing that got me was Heartbreaker, Led Zeppelin. What's wrong with that? I thought it was a banjo at first. I didn't know what was going on with it, but it just captured my attention and it's like, wow. You know, so um, taken from that, uh, I started collecting this kind of thing. Indeed. I think I had every black face fender combo except for a vibroverb there for a while old plexis everything i was kind of a collector and then i ended up with a 54 fender pro mm -hmm. and uh this was before i really started doing much with electronics and uh plugged in it was glorious for about 30 seconds and it hadn't been played for 30 years so the caps all blew and um i had um, a bunch of friends that worked for texas instruments that were um, just super intelligent electronics folks that, uh, that ended up counseling me, you know, on, on various things of electronics, you know, uh, down the road. But um, uh, helped me out with changing the caps and, you know, and studying this thing. Um, at the time, I was full out into a career with architecture. I uh, had an architectural firm in Texas, um, a lot of heavy design work. We did, you know, a lot of cool stuff and uh, was really rolling when all this kind of this bug hit me yes um, so solvency wasn't it wasn't an issue wasn't a was. problem at the time yeah it, you know it was a it was a it was a great hobby um, started using some of my CAD skills to kind of design some things um, you know virtually and uh, ended up taking that 54 Fender Pro and uh, marrying a few aspects of several different pros, which they developed over the years beautifully, some better or some worse. Took a 54 power section and a 57 preamp and uh, cobbled them together, literally. Um, came up with something called the Wampus Cat, which mm -hmm. was my high school mascot. Uh, Sounds I, like a predator. I, I task a Texas. Well, n nobody really knows what it is. <laughs> So, uh, but it sounds cool. And um, so I took it around to some music stores just to get feedback and, you know, got some orders like, what's up with this, you know? And um, so I kind of went kicking and screaming into building amps for other people. And one thing led to another. And um, pretty soon I was, I was constantly building, constantly, you know, uh, behind. Sure. Um, got a couple of amps uh, with some uh, country guys on Austin City Limits. And then it just kind of blew up from there. And so I was building all the time and uh, um, still it was just part time weekends, you know, nights. Never saw my family, you know, outside of the garage that I was building this stuff in. And um, so I um, finally got uh, uh, talked into having a booth at the Dallas Guitar Show. And the powers be to be behind the scenes, 
thought it might be nice to place my booth right next to the PRS booth. Uh huh. Yeah. So, um, and uh, the powers to be told Mr. Smith not to bring any amps because there was maybe some cool amps that would be real close to him that he could use for his gig at the Dallas show that year. And um, he came over and um, liked what he plugged into really well and bought everything I had that was actually for sale because most of them were were just um, amps that I, had, I, was, I hadn't yet shipped to customers. And um, I kind of rest is history. Yes, indeed. Now, of the Sewell amplifiers, like you said, the first one was kind of a mutation of, of the Pro. Correct. What did you kind of nestle into as, it was it a, a variety of like some Fenderisms as well as some kind of Englishisms? Or what yeah. was your kind of, your flagship forte, if you right. will, or was it multifaceted? Well, the, um, I ended up with four models before I shut her down for, um, for changing careers and moving to PRS. Um, Wampus Cat was the first one. Cathode biased 115 combo, um, just like the Pro, which yep. had the P12 Bluebell. You know, it's beautiful, beautiful amp, by the way. It's a very unheralded, you know, sleeper. But um, uh, then I um, hooked up with a guy that had this very thing in his office at uh, in a uh, in a store that he he was a proprietor of in uh, at um, in Highland Park, Texas, which is pretty affluent place. And I learned about all things Plexi because mm -hmm. he was a Marshall like freak. And um, it was a very humbling thing. And I worked a solid year with that guy to try to go into that world. Ended up with an amp I called the Texaplex. That was number two. Um, and it took off. He, he still has the first one. He got the first one for helping me, you know, right. work this out. Um, I, I was inspired by a concert that Eric Johnson gave one time. Um, he had, you know, I've seen him with his clean tones, a couple of different things. Sure. Start out with twin, then deluxe reverb. This particular time he had two vibro verbs. Mm -hmm. It was the most glorious clean tones that, that I'd witnessed Eric or anybody since have. And um, so that night after the concert, I was so inspired, I went home and I worked on the amp that ended up being the Texa Verb. Okay. And then uh, lastly, I kind of wanted to move into the 80s with, <laughs> with a design, and I um, designed an amp called the Blister Tone. And mm. it, was, um, it was a little hotter, a little more aggressive, a little more big hair kind of. Or spandex, if you will. Spandex, big hair, et cetera. So those were the four that I ended up, uh, ended up with when I shut her down. Excellent. I like that gives us a pretty good kind of pre-PRS Doug Sewell experience. All right. Stay tuned for part two when we take it from PRS and beyond. Greg Koch here with Doug Sewell. Wildwood Vision. Come and feast.